God bless you. Good morning. I just wanted to bring a short word to you this morning, what the Lord was showing me about how we should present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him. And this in this is so huge. People forget that your body that the Lord gave you is a gift. The body you're living in is his gift to you. Now, what are we going to do with that? Many people grow up and whatever happens to them, they seem to have a pessimistic attitude and they're always going to be people that are complaining. In fact, we have animals. I've had animals. Some of them have been very uh, uh, laid back and accepting of whatever I would uh, do or say, you know, they just go with the flow, like some children that we raise, right? And they're just obedient children, and you're just so thankful for them. And even when my children were little, and I would go out with them, people would say, your children are just perfect. They're just like the role model kids. What do you do? What do you do? And I said, I, I don't do anything except just pray with them. They're raised with the Lord. And I, and I pray over them and I pray with them and we, we do the best we can. That's all. But as people age and also as situations happen to all of us in life and with animals, it seems like different courses happen. Seems like you can raise a child, you know, and think you've done everything that you know to do. And then all of a sudden that child is someplace that you have no clue. You have no clue where in the world, what in the world happened along the way. But you see, all things happen for a reason. And there is no coincidence. And that we should remember that even that child that might be in that difficult place right now that you've been praying for is going through something and God is teaching that person something. That son, that daughter, that they are teaching. God is teaching them something. And all he wants us to do is be thankful for whatever situation they happen to be in. Now, a lot of people, <clears throat> it was asked of me last night. Um, sister in the Lord called me and she said, I'd like your opinion as a minister, Susan, because I value that. And she said, What's, what should a person do? Uh, she was asked, actually, by someone that called her. And they wanted to know, should uh, should this or that be allowed in the church? Now, these are totally unbiblical un principles that you and I know would be, <coughs> that would stop a person from going to heaven, right? It's just against, it's against the Ten Commandments. Let's just start with that. And she says, what do they do? Because she says, uh, that person is go attending a church and she says, people are in leadership positions that are very much breaking the Ten Commandments. She says, what do, what do, what do they do? They, want, they called me and said, what do I do? Do I leave the church? Do I speak out? She says, this is an abomination. What's going on in the church? She said, Susan, what do I tell that person? What do I tell them? And it took me back immediately to many situations that I have been in and also personal situations in my own life. And the Lord said to me about one situation that I was going through a very difficult time. And he said, he said, uh, this is a human being, basically. He said, if you had a sick dog, would you put them out? Wow. You know, there are churches. You know, we think of a church, like Marlena said the other night, as a hospital. A church is like a hospital, if you really want to see it that way. And we can see the body of Christ as a hospital, okay? Some of you are in lockdown. You can't get out. You can't minister like you used to, or you can't even witness. And so you're stuck there, and you're like, what do I do? But you still have a telephone. 
you can still communicate that way. You know, God always makes a way. And if all else fails, you can still pray because there's no distance in time and space in the spirit. Okay. I basically said this. I said, you know, many churches fall because they allow things that are ungodly to be in leadership positions. This is my answer. This was my answer last night to uh, Marlena called. And I said, I have, God has given me words to certain pastors. And I said, uh, God sent me dreams, two dreams. One dream he told me you would accept. The other dream he told me you would not accept. Because you see, pride grips the hearts of these leaders, these pastors. I hope I'm looking correctly. Um, and I said, my answer is this. If you allow a person that is going against the Ten Commandments to be in leadership positions, that means even get up and share their testimony and you know they're living in sin, any pastor that allows someone to get up and share their testimony, knowing that they are breaking, living, breaking the Ten Commandments, is wrong. That pastor will lose his church. The church will fall. The church will crumble. Because there is a Babylonian inside, a spirit of Babylonian ism or whatever you want to call it, active, not only in the pews, but moving now to the pulpit. The pulpit and the, the platform where the, the ministers uh, preach and the choir sings is supposed to be a holy place. That is so the sinners can come in and sit down in the pews and be fed. They're coming in for help. They are not coming in to get up on the platform and take over or share how wonderful God is. And, and they're still, God is still allowing them to do this and that. They don't, some of them don't even see it as a sin. But you see, they're not going to get fed by the truth if they're on the platform and the pastor is going to reap what he sows if he allows them to be on that platform because he is stepping down and giving the platform to the enemy, basically. And I am not saying that person is the enemy. I'm saying that spirit that is breaking the Ten Commandments, that is against everything that um, the Bible speaks of, that is holy is righteous, and is considered salvation. So this is what I said. I said uh, they should not be put in leadership positions. Let them come in and let them sit there. But let the Holy Spirit work on them. Let them be taught by the Spirit of God and also godly principles by the leaders that hopefully are living within these commandments. Because there is no coincidence that they are there. But getting back to present your bodies a living sacrifice, you see, there are complainers I have a cat right now that no matter what I feed her, she's always whining, complaining. She's very loving, but she has this attitude that she's going to be in my face 24-7. Meow, 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 meow. Well, that's cute. People come over and they'll visit you and they'll, oh, isn't that cute? Well, it's it might be cute to them, but go ahead and live with an animal or a human being that has a pessimistic attitude that's always complaining, wanting more, always pushing, 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 and does not have a passive, submissive attitude. I was watching Elizabeth Elliot's testimony. It's a three-hour testimony. She's a, a missionary. She lived with Indians that murdered her husband, one of her husbands. And she learned so much. 
She said the Indians never complained. They had to live in this horrible weather to begin with. But she said the women would never complain. They would never set the basket off of their head on the ground and say, oh boy. They never did that. They just accepted this was their life and they weren't even Christians. And here we are, Christians, complaining or wanting more, always pushing, always about ourself and never remembering that life is a gift. First off, your life is a gift. And to present, as the Lord says, your bodies, that's everything that happens to your bodies, to give thanks for all things, in all things give thanks. Who wants to hear that? Who wants to hear that? Let alone think about that every morning when you get up maybe and your body isn't feeling good. Or maybe you, you don't even have any arms or feet and you're in a chair. And it would be so easy to get up and complain and say, but I can't even pull the silverware drawer out because I don't have any arms. I don't have any hands. But to give thanks unto the Lord, not only for your bodies, but to give thanks for every situation, even that son that's rebellious, even that one that is living an abominative, abom abominative, is that word, life. They're, they're living out of the will of God, but they are under your roof, possibly still. They are under your roof. And if they're not physically under your roof, they're spiritually on the altar of God that you have placed them. So it does not matter because they cannot escape your prayers. They can't escape. And you, I pray, are thankful for whatever, whatever happens. Imagine living with people that you wouldn't even understand their language. They just murdered a family member. And you're learning about them. You know, God teaches us in every situation, if we will be open and teachable. In the old days, I'm going to say the old days, children were told to go to their room until they would find their happy face and then they could come out. Children were told, that's not acceptable in this house. Go into your room, and when you find your happy face, when you will be thankful, then you can come out. I think sometimes today, <clears throat> that's why God allows things to happen to certain people. He's allowing them to go into his room until they find their happy face. That's why a lot of people say the Jews just kept going around the mountain over and over and over because they didn't learn. And in the end, they still had a pessimistic attitude and God divided them by drawing the line with Moses came down and said, who's going to live for God? Make your decision. You know, there is a time that God will choose the left from the right, the goats from the sheep. Because all along the timeline of the Lord until today, we have a choice. But there is no coincidence. God has you where you are. There's no coincidence the relatives that you have. There's no coincidence that as you are given knowledge, God is giving you a choice. 
And now that God has brought this information, this remembrance, because many of you know this already. Those of you, this is new information or something you've never thought about. Now it's in your lap. And life is a choice. But there is no coincidence. No coincidence. Exactly what happens. Every day, we are given a choice to present ourselves, our bodies, as a living sacrifice, to live it, and to be people that God is pleasing to look upon, not to be someone he's sad to look upon. They need to go around the mountain again, I can see that. We want to only go around that mountain one time, and preferably none. Preferably, we will be obedient because we are like the children. We don't want to have God say to us, go to the room. And when you can put on your happy face, when you can find it, you can come out of your room. And to realize life is a gift. Every person in your life is a gift. Every operation you've gone through is a gift. Something that many of us have not thought of it that way. But you see, God wants us to see it as he sees it. The bigger picture. The bigger picture. There's always a bigger picture. Why would God bring this to us now? Because there are days coming that will be difficult for the someone that is outside of Christ to go through. And it's not about us. It's about serving others. Always. It's not about serving yourself. Jesus his whole life served others. Something to think about. I love you. Father, I thank you for all things that will happen this day. I thank you for my body. I present it to you with prayer and thanksgiving in my heart for all things, everything, and I trust those I placed on the altar, you are thankful that I am trusting you. I'm giving them back to you. You gave them to me and I'm giving them back to you, but I'm going to be positive and thankful in everything. I refuse to complain about anything this day. And I pray every day in Jesus' name. This was a very heavy message, a very, very deep word that the Lord was giving us this morning. It moves me, I pray. It has moved your heart. Let me know. Leave me a comment. Send me an email. I am working for you this day, for the Lord this day. And I love it. It's an honor, a privilege to live for Christ. God bless you.